Hi all, Fuzzy Bear Barian here. I've been getting a lot of requests to post the build I've been using in my speedruns, and so here we are. First up, know that what I've been running is an end game build. I'd seen a lot of cool players doing great speedruns from the start of the game, but I hadn't seen any doing it at the end with a maxed out character. So the whole time I've been leveling up in Neo, I was planning on doing main missions with speedruns using a max character, just to see how fast they could get done, though mostly just because I like doing that. And that's precisely why I started these speedruns the moment I hit level 750, and why in this video all my core stats are at max, which is 99. That said, you don't need a level 750 character to match this build, but you will need to be about level 345 I would suggest, as that is the minimum number of points you need to get both the skills you need and push your equipment weight to 30% for that sweet A agility rating. I'm not going to respec to show you the minimum number of points you need to allocate here. The reason for that is, well, I'm lazy, and also this build isn't really my speedrunning build. It's a slightly modified version of the Beast Mode build put together by fellow YouTuber Keigurasumaru. I'll just call him Cage for short. If you're about level 345, I highly recommend checking out Cage's build, as you'll get a good idea from his video where to allocate your points when you're half the level I am. I'll leave a link to his build in the description. Also, P War Gaming or Project War Gaming has a similar build he calls the Nippon Steel build. His is a powerful single katana build, though his is about damage rather than speed. With a weight of 70%, the Nippon Steel build is a heavy build, so it's no good for speed running. Still, it is basically a very similar setup to this with just a handful of notable differences. If you're around level 215, it might be a good place to start getting a feel for the basic setup as the armor structure is mostly the same. I'll put a link to P Wars build in the description below as well. So now to the actual build, which is pretty simple. The base is the Kingo's and Sonata armor set, with the torso armor slot kept blank to enable us to keep to a A agility rating. A agility is important for speedrunning because your character will move faster obviously, but it's also very important for getting as much damage from your build as you can. Getting A agility adds a little extra damage thanks to the agility damage bonus we have on the main equipped range weapon. This is a good time to point out that this is not the fastest build in the game. You can definitely go faster. However, the faster you spec for, the less damage you'll put out. It's one thing to run to a boss fast, but if you can't kill that boss for a while, then the extra time gained running will be lost. The best speed running build, in my view, is the one that balances speed with damage to best effect, and I personally think that's this build. So let's work down the list. As you all know, I'm a fan of dual swords, but even if I wasn't, I think dual swords are essential for speed running. In this case, I primarily use the Futatsu Mei Narimuni and Honi Bami Toshiro swords. The reason for this is I want the damage reduction of the Master Swordsman armor of 2.6%, but most of all I want the 14.7% skill key reduction perk. If you run straight to an enemy and burn through your key, that's a big help to keep the run going without a break. That said, sometimes the skill key reduction and or damage isn't necessary. When it isn't, I swap this sword out for my Shishio and Honikui dual swords as these have a higher damage multiplier. Sometimes I find these swords make shorter work of bosses than the other sword too, but weirdly that isn't always the case. So usually I do test runs with both of those dual swords just to see the difference, to see which one's better. Uh, so yeah, those are the two swords I run with. Both have skill key damage, change to attack heart of A+, skill life drain, and importantly, final blow damage. One sword has close combat damage, and you'll notice the other has skill damage. There's no real reason there for that, other than I use those swords with different builds, and the different damage types are useful to avoid stacking too much of the same kind of damage with those other builds. With this build, it doesn't really matter. Though, since we're already got, we've already got close combat damage on our gear, you might want to go with skill damage to be safe. Besides, you can roll higher skill damage than close combat damage, and since we're lower than usual with our damage output, that can be helpful even if the difference is only minor. In my secondary slot is the Atagi Sadamuni Katana. I never switch this out because it's the fourth piece I need from the Kingo set to get the five piece bonus of damage from behind of 20%. We get that thanks to the Asakani Magatama in my accessory slot. This is the most important perk for this build really. Kingo's only gives us 8.6% close combat damage, which isn't much. We can't improve on that without increasing our weight, so it becomes very important to be able to deal more damage in another way. If you watch my speed runs, you'll see I attack from behind wherever I can, and now you know why. 
The weapon I have in my secondary slot varies between the Warrior of the West bow and the Bellowing Ten Ryu cannon. There are times when the cannon's extra damage is useful, such as in the Spirit Stone Slumbers against Tachibana for example. Other times the bow is useful to get shots off faster. In either case, I have agility damage bonus of A plus on both of them. So no matter which one I'm using, I'm still getting the maximum amount of damage I can get from my A agility build, which I think is about an extra 5% between B and A agility, or basically it's about 15% in total when you have an A agility character. In my secondary range weapon slot is the Raven Wing Rifle. I don't use this at all, but it's a Yatagarasu set piece, meaning with our Yasakani Magatama on, we get the two piece perk from this rifle. The damage reduction of 1.6% is the bonus there that I want. Not much else, but it all helps. I have attack rolled onto every armor piece. I managed to get a plus 36 on the Kabuto, or Kabuto, but just plus 35s on everything else. A little extra damage would be nice, but I haven't been bothered trying to get it to be honest. Probably won't either. Uh, maybe I will. Nah, I won't. The grind to do so is a bit much compared to the value you get out of it in my view. Uh, I can deal with a little, couple of numbers of less attack. I also have defense and toughness on all pieces as well, which is kind of essential given we're down an armor piece. You'll notice on the Kabu 2 there that I have vers uh, the special effect versus water. That's not a standard perk I run with, by the way. Instead, I tend to re-roll that particular slot depending on the run I'm doing. Usually I'll try to roll something to give me extra defense against the type of element I might be facing in the run. It's not essential though. I only mess around with re-rolling there if I feel it will be helpful. Um, a good example is like rolling for versus fire. If you get set on fire, it slows you down, slows your running down. So defense against fire is good. And in some runs, it is difficult to avoid fire entirely. Um, entirely. Same with lightning and so on. Uh, one of the reasons I'm prepared to re-roll that spare slot as well is because there's nothing else really to go in that slot. So it's basically making the most of a slot that doesn't offer much. If I can get a little bit of protection in a run, then that helps a little bit. If you look at my gloves, you'll see everything I've already mentioned as well as running speed and damage bonus less armor of A+. The damage bonus less armor gives us a small increase to our damage output as a result of losing our torso armor. It's not much and it doesn't compensate for losing the potential plus 35 or plus 36 attack we would have we would have had on torso armor. But it is something even if it's small. Don't ask me how much as I lost my test numbers and can't remember as I'm saying this. But I did test it at one point and was satisfied it added damage so it's on there. You can't roll running speed on your arms, but you can inherit it, so that's what I've done here. Running speed actually maxes out at 14.9%, so the roll I got there isn't ideal. But I wasn't terribly concerned enough about 0.5% to try to get a better roll and hope it was inheritable as well. If you get 14.9% on your gloves, well, more power to you. You can roll running speed on waist and feet though, so there's no need to inherit it there, thankfully. Again, on my waist you can see I have 14.7%. I rolled a lot and didn't get 14.9% there, so I just gave up. I did say I was lazy, so I didn't want to keep doing that. And just so you know, running speed refers to the speed you move normally when you're not dashing, and this is important. There are times in a speed run where the complications of map design force you to run rather than dash, and in those times having all the speed you can muster it while you're running rather than dashing is essential. Dash endurance of 18.9% is the max, so the 18.8% I have there is good enough. This endurance applies when you hold the X button down to dash, which is kind of obvious I guess, but I thought I'd better say that for those of you that don't know. My feet don't have max stats either, but they too are close enough at 18.5% really um, for dash endurance and 14.7% for running speed, close enough. If I persisted to get better rolls, it may be possible that over the course of a map I could shave a second off with extra running speed, but I sincerely doubt it would do much more than that, if that, which is why I never bothered persevering for perfect rolls on those stats. Of course, I'm not seriously speedrunning, I'm just running these maps for the fun of it. If you are serious with speedrunning, you'll want to max those stats. But then again, if you, if you are serious, you're probably more interested in speedrunning from the start of the game instead of with max stats at the end of the game anyway. But whatever, do whatever is fun, I say. The Sonata piece I have there gives me extra final blow damage of 
This is the ideal piece for this slot, not only for that extra damage perk which helps against runs with human boss enemies, but also because the Sonata set is a medium armor, which can keep you at A agility. I honestly can't think of a better single piece of armor to have in that slot. If you don't have Sonata though, and a lot of people don't unfortunately, then you're probably better off with the lightest piece of armor you can put there. You won't get a great damage perk from that obviously, but you will get extra defense that the Sonata piece doesn't actually give. My accessories are the usual Magatama and Yasukani Magatama that I pretty much have in all my other videos. They're still the two best accessories I have. Both have Yokai close combat damage on them. One has water damage, which is my favorite element, and the one I use 90% of the time. What about the other 10% of the time? See, the thing is, each speedrun is different. Some bosses have resistance to water, such as Yuki Ona on the Falling Snow mission. Um, like Umi Bozu, she's more susceptible to fire. So for those missions, I swap out my water accessory for one with fire, um, or for whatever element works best on the boss. But only if I have one. If I don't have a Magatama that also does high Yoko close combat damage and the element uh, elemental damage I want, then I won't bother swapping them out. You're better off with the extra Yoko close combat damage than the extra elemental damage most of the time anyway, I think. If that's the case, I'll look to see if the Guardian Spirit Tengen can compensate as Tengen gives an elemental perk for the element of your choice, so it can make up the difference a bit there. My shortcuts can be divided into two sections. Apart from the elemental talisman, which I've just talked about, the bottom section will always contain weakness, carnage and the tiger running scroll. All three are absolutely essential for speedruns. Most early speedrunners use Sloth 2, I notice, um, to slow bosses. I haven't been using Sloth in my speedruns. It would help, sure, uh, especially on bosses that move around a lot, like Ogress. Um, you can use Sloth if you want, though sometimes there just isn't enough room for it, in my opinion, in uh, your shortcuts compared to the need for other more beneficial items. So I, I don't really, I, I prefer to run without Sloth, but use it if you want, put it in there if you want. In my second shortcut area, I have uh, an elixir, obviously, and protection talisman. Uh, I typically don't use an elixir in speedrun, so uh, I just really have it there because it's always been there. Um, there are many times on levels where you'll get hit running or get slashed while opening a door and whatnot, and in those cases, protection talisman is really good. Where I have kunai and shuriken uh, will change level to level. I don't really use kunai and shuriken in speedruns. For instance, on the Silver Mine Rise mission, I swap those out for anti-toxin pills to protect me from poison, and also fire stop talismans to protect me from wheel monk's fire, uh, which on that particular map, for example, is one. There's one spot where it's really hard to avoid. So yeah, I I swap these slots out depending on what the level requires. Same goes for my Guardian Spirit, actually. You may think Tengen Kukaku is the best spirit, or you may argue Karajishi is the best, or you might be a Kato fan. Let me tell you, none of them are the best. When speedrunning, there are different stages of runs that require different benefits. That's why in my runs you'll often see my Guardian Spirit is different speedrun to speedrun. I usually, what I usually do is a, a few test runs in which I swap out my Guardian Spirits just to see which one suits the overall run best. You know, basically it just depends on your needs, which Guardian Spirit is the one to choose. So I use all three, and I test each one to determine which one is the one I'll be using before I settle on one to practice the run on. Now, if you're adventurous, you could choose, I think it's Gaia Kutu as your Guardian Spirit. Gaia Kutu gives you an extra 10% dash speed. This will make you faster for sure. However, unless you're rocking a ninjutsu build, you're not going to get much else out of that Guardian Spirit. I chose to give up the 10% extra dash speed to have more damage in my attacks. Some bosses can become problematic if you give them even a few extra seconds to jump around and do their thing. I didn't want that. But yeah, if you feel you can dispatch bosses fast in your own way without the extra damage from Kato, Tengen or Karajisi, uh, then by all means try out that Gai Kato or Gai Kutu or Gai Kuto uh, Guardian Spirit. Clan-wise, uh, I'm still with Honda. The damage halved and skill damage perks are too good to pass up with a build like this, I think. Uh, I did consider Shibata to get the dash attack bonus, but my problem with clans is that you lose your weekly benefits by switching between them. So I'm kind of just sticking with Honda to get the extra skill damage week to week now. There are no clans that make you run faster, so it's really just about damage there, I think. I've also completed all titles in Neo and used the prestige points from that to maximize my yokai and human close combat damage, as well as reduce damage from falling and damage from elemental attacks. Uh, I don't want to go over skill trees at length, I do that every video and it gets a bit much repeating the same old, same old. However, 
right now I'm scrolling through each skill tree, so you can at least pause the video wherever you want to see what I've got unlocked. Just know uh, my skill trees include all the passives, uh, especially dashing, running and key passives, and of course nearly every dual sword skill there is. Uh, some of what you see there you don't really need, like ninjutsu kunai and shurikens for example. I just use them from time to time for fun. Uh, other things I've just unlocked because I could. Uh, I also fully unlocked rifle ammo and damage even though I practically never use a rifle. So basically what you see there including in the magic tree are things I either have equipped or have equipped at some point for some reason. But yeah, you don't need me to explain all this again. Just rewind and pause the vid wherever you need to to see what I've got unlocked there. So here are my core stats. As I mentioned earlier, this is an end game build, uh, but level 345 is what you really need to make it work. You'll notice toughness is in the green there and defense isn't all that hot either. So it's obvious this is a fairly weak build in terms of taking damage. So you have to be careful. But funnily enough, when I'm not speed running, I tend to use this build anyway now. I like being fast. So I find even though I'm not tanky, I can still keep safe easily just by running around. Plus with protection and steel talismans as well uh, added into the mix and the damage halved perk of clan Honda, well at level 750 you're pretty powerful anyway so I don't really think it's a concern. I'll scroll through the special effects so you can see them here. Um, there's nothing outstanding there. I mean this isn't an, an X damage build or a Y critical damage build or a I don't know, D living weapon build or whatever. I mean, we do have 74.9% final blow damage, which is pretty good, and 44.2% yokai close combat damage, which is pretty good. But this is really a balanced build designed to be light to get through levels fast, but just powerful enough to lay waste to bosses once you get there, and usually provided that you can navigate behind them. So yeah, that's the build uh, that I've been using in these speed runs. Uh, you asked and I've delivered. Um, if you're wondering why there's no gameplay in this video, it's because the video is long enough as it is. Uh, and also, I've been doing a ton of speed runs, so just go and look at any one of those uh, to see the build in action. And there's a truckload of them, so take your pick. And that's about it. Hopefully you guys will have gotten something out of this and can do some speed running for yourselves. Speed running is a challenge and it can be frustrating, but it's also fun. I personally love it and I'm going to keep doing it. Also, if you have a better speedrunning build, by all means post a link to it in the comments below. I would love to see it. So yeah, that's it guys. Have fun and bye for now.